Hey there guys, John here again. Well, as you can see, I've got the old sewing machine broken out again, or the uh, bench top thread injector, as my friend Wahiker likes to call it. Uh, thanks for the attempted save at my manly image there, Bill. Uh, seriously though guys, what I wanted to do today was uh, kind of a combination video. This is gonna be a review slash instructional video. I'm gonna show you the uh, piece of gear that I threw together, kind of go review it a little bit. And then in the second part of the video, um, we'll kind of go over just a real quick tutorial on how to throw one of these together yourself if you're interested. Um, pretty simple project, not much to it. Uh, once again, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So anyway, let's go. Now, like a lot of you that spend significant amount of time pursuing a range of outdoor activities, I have my share of gear to help me um, enjoy or accomplish or allow me to get out and experience you know this range of activities that I personally like to pursue. One of those pieces of equipment um, is your sleep system or more specifically in this case your uh, sleeping bags. Now you can see I've got everything here from this uh, monstrosity of a winter car camping base camp um, you know type sleeping bag that'll keep me warm well below zero to the three season version of that same thing. You know, of course these are both heavy bags. Um, you know, to more specialized pieces of, of gear like uh, the bag that I use mostly for backpacking, which is just my synthetic uh, 20 degree bag. You know, down to things like, you know, your bag liners. Uh, this one here is just a, a flannel version of a bag liner. Um, you know, to a, a fleece bag liner which in some case doubles is just the bag itself, you know, on midsummer trips. So even with this range of, of bags that I have here, or this equipment, um, you'll sometimes find yourself, uh, you know, needing more, um, ironically. And it's where you start getting into more um, specific outdoor activities, much like you would, you know, in, in rock climbing or something like that, you need very specific pieces of equipment to be able to accomplish that activity uh, safely. I've recently developed an interest in super ultra lightweight backpacking, essentially just as a personal challenge to myself, wanting to see how low I can go on my pack weights and still retain a level of comfort and safety while out in the field. And so uh, with that said, as far as the sleeping system goes, none of the uh, bags that I, that I have or the liners that I have did not quite fit the bill as far as what I needed to be able to accomplish my goal of a base pack weight of under five pounds with that system. And so, you know, I could have went out and spent hundreds of dollars on a really nice one pound down sleeping bag, but um, yeah, that's just not the way I do things. So I figured why not make one myself? And that's exactly what I did. And this is it. So as you can see, it's, uh, it, there's not a huge difference in size here compared to the bag that I typically use backpacking. Um, it is a lot uh, narrower in circumference and a little bit longer. And this is actually for a reason though. It fits the pack that I'm using for that system perfectly. I designed it like this um, and the stuff sack like this because it fits perfectly in my system. The biggest difference however is weight. This bag here weighs about three pounds. Um, it is a synthetic. It's not the most expensive thing on the market. Um, it fits, it, it's perfect for what I use it for, but it, it just does not um, close that gap to what I'm looking for, what I was looking for with this bag. This bag weighs uh, just over a pound. Now, when I'm going for a base pack weight of five pounds or less, Something that uh, takes up more than half of that weight just in my sleeping bags, it just wasn't going to cut it. And that was my primary reasoning for making this bag. So anyway, um, we'll get this spread out here. I'll give you a quick tour of it, a quick showing off of it, and then we'll get into a little bit of you know how I made this and how you can make one yourself. So getting into some of the features of this bag here, uh, first and most important to me is weight. Now I'm coming in at a grand total of about 24 ounces here, so that's that's about a pound and a half. Not the lightest in the world as far as weight goes. Now once again I could have spent hundreds of dollars on a, a top quality down sleeping bag and got in under a pound on this, um, but I spent a grand total of five dollars on this bag. So for the cost to weight 
ratio it's just unbeatable in my book and I'm more than willing to uh, you know mess around with those extra few ounces that I wasn't able to get down I, I really wanted a pound but uh, you know oh well five bucks compared to hundreds of dollars those few extra ounces I can work with that so anyway that's what we got as far as size goes uh, we're going about five inches across here and about 14 inches in length now I designed this that way for a reason this sack of course it based on a different stuff sack um, you know I can it, it'll be different sizes but I designed this stuff sack this way for a reason and that was because it fits perfectly in the uh, pack that I'm going to be carrying this with and as you can see it, it just complements the pack well it rides well it's the perfect um, perfect setup for me for this system so now we'll break this open here and pull it out give it a little bit better of a look here Right out. Okay. So this is it. One of the uh, first things you're going to notice here is this really nifty pattern here. I've got these multicolors. Now I made this bag myself, and I am not going to take any credit for this really nifty sewing job here because I did not do it. This was just a cheap old sleeping bag that I had laying around um, probably new cost 10 15 bucks something like that uh, just polyester uh, ripstop polyester it was fairly lightweight and was perfect for what I wanted to use it for which was this down sleeping bag. the uh, overview of this is going to be pretty quick and simple there's not much to it not a lot of features it's really simple um, it was a rectangle bag and I kept the rectangle um, portion completely as it was and about midway down I started tapering it into um, a mummy style so the legs taper taper in so I guess you would call it a semi mummy bag now with the zipper I went only with a half zipper down to about your uh, where your hips would be and that was of course to reduce weight um, you know and allow easy access as far as the uh, baffles go I went with just a basic um, stitch through baffling method and of course that's just where you take and uh, sew directly through you know top and bottom liners there um, all the way through to create the baffle so uh, it's not the best method in the world to use because you do lose a lot of heat out of that uh, seam there uh, but it was the essentially the only method based on my skill level that that I could uh, muster up here So anyhow, that's that's that the baffles are 16 inches wide in hindsight I probably would have shortened those to about 12 maybe even 10 inches um, because the down tends to uh, Move around quite a bit in there. And so one of the main uh, priorities when using this bag is to uh, once you get to camp, get it out, fluff it up, and distribute that down evenly throughout the bag. Not a, a huge process, not a big deal, it's just an important step. As far as the temperature rating on this bag, since it is a homemade one, I can't really honestly give you an accurate temperature rating. What I can tell you is that I've had this out in the field a couple times now, and it's functioned, functioned really well. Now this is a primarily a summer bag, and so the temperature rating is not going to go down too low it has about a pound of down filling in it and uh, the two trips that I took it on the first was a desert uh, high desert uh, trip and it was fairly warm at night I'd say in the mid 50s uh, the bag was perfectly fine in fact I had to unzip it a couple times and um, you know just completely open it up on the top end and slept perfectly comfortable like that now, second trip I just got back from was a, um, a trip up into the mountains, and I was at high elevation and camped near a uh, running stream, and so it was a lot cooler. In fact, um, I'm not sure how cool it got, but you could see your breath in the morning. It was a little bit chilly. The bag still functioned really well. Um, I got cold once during the night in it, but I think that was due to 
um, not distributing the down properly because once I rearranged myself and, and kind of, you know, uh, turned, tossed and turned a little bit, the bag warmed right back up and I slept, um, or, you know, the, the cold wasn't a factor the rest of the night. So, so that's about it on this guy. Like I said, there's not a lot of features, not a lot of bells and whistles to it. Um, pretty basic design and setup here. Um, like I said, threw this together myself and uh, kept it simple. Didn't uh, go too elaborate here. So anyway, what we'll do now is get into the uh, making of this and show you guys how I did it. And if you want to throw one of these together yourself, hopefully these instructions will help. Okay, to make this bag, there's going to be a couple things that you're going to need. The first is a sewing machine. Second, you're going to need a sleeping bag. Now this can be just a cheap sleeping bag from Walmart or from some other store, something that doesn't cost a lot, or even something that you just had laying around like I did. The last thing that you're going to need is a source of down. Now down can be quite expensive, and what I did to circumvent that problem was I kept my eye out at local thrift stores for uh, old down blankets, something that still had quite a bit of loft to them and a fair amount of down. Now once you have the bag that you're going to be using for this project, the first thing that you're going to want to do is open up the bag and you're going to want to use a seam stitcher to take the seams out of two sides of this bag. This will give you access to the interior of the bag which allows you access to be able to pull the seams out which in turn allows you to get out that layer of um, cheap polyester batting that is used for the filler on these bags. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove the zipper. Now that you're left with just the shell, the fun part of the project begins. Once you have the fabric cut to the size that you want it, you can go ahead and start the process of the baffles. On my bag, I chose to go with 16 inch baffles. Now what you want to do is starting from the top of the bag is mark out where your baffle is going to be at 16 inches. Go ahead and do this all the way down the length of the bag until you have all of your baffles marked. With your baffles marked, it's time to head back to the sewing machine. Now just go ahead and sew your baffles. Now the really fun part begins, getting all of that down out of the down comforter that you've acquired. I just used a basic black garbage bag to contain all of the down from the down comforter. Now that you have all of your down ready, it's time to start stuffing the bag. I just grabbed approximately six to seven handfuls of down and stuffed into each baffle. I chose to stuff one baffle at a time, sew it, and then move on to the next one. This reduced the amount of essentially mess that I was making. Once you have all of your baffles filled with down and all of the seams sewn back up, it's time to install the zipper. Once you have the zipper installed, go ahead and fold over the bag inside out and double stitch the seam all around the exterior of the bag up and up to the zipper. Now that this is done, you're pretty much home free. You can go ahead and pull the bag back in right side out. Just add your finishing touches such as zipper stops and your stuff sack and you're pretty much done. Well there you go. Now you've got yourself a nice lightweight down sleeping bag for not a lot of effort and for definitely very little money. I guess the only thing left to do now is to get outside and put it to use. Enjoy.